Good afternoon, fellow ruminators. Welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrews. Thank you so much for joining as we're about to discuss a very important topical matter. And this morning, well, this afternoon, I should say, we are going to look briefly at the fact that it seems that our Prime Minister, the Prime Minister of Jamaica, Dr. Andrew Holness, is attacking our freedom of expression. And, you know, recently, I, you know, I actually um, uploaded a video, which I uploaded day before yesterday, about the fact that Jamaica's media need to be held accountable. Please go and watch that video because it's a very important video as it relates to the lack of responsibility and the lack of accountability of Jamaica's media and that the media need to be held more accountable and that people need to push back on a lot of the misinformation and disinformation that the media is disseminating. But we're hearing in recent times that the, the um, political class is actually clamping down on individuals, on Jamaicans who seek to challenge the status quo. And let me just say here that we are not here on this platform trying to spread rumors and trying to spread allegations. Well, allegations are allegations and allegations should have free spaces to be able to air what their side is. And then it can, if it can stand to scrutiny in the court system, then so let it be. But we cannot at this point in time think that we can um, begin to control information in the way that the government wants to control information in Jamaica. Something seems to be eerie about that. It's cringe worthy, the news that is coming out of Jamaica as regards to they're trying to actually control the media. And there was a story that came out, unacceptable, it's coming from the Jamaican Observer, and they're saying unacceptable. Uh, minister with responsibility for information decries political act attacks on media. So she's actually decrying the public attacks on media. Minister with responsibility for information center, Dr. Dana Morris Dixon, has described as an acceptable recent political attacks on the local media. According to Morris Dixon, the Andrew Holness led administration is committed to press freedom and everything it has done has demonstrated that. I don't think that they are committed to press freedom. But, you know, she is the voice of the prime minister and this is good PR. She pointed to the weekly post cabinet meeting briefings as indicative of the government's support for free media. We come here every Wednesday, invite the media, we bring ministers out, we take every question, whether they are hard or easy, we take them, we don't want to run away from the media. But I think that Jamaicans are concerned about the information that is being disseminated because oftentimes there are lots of you know hypocrisies there are lots of contradictions and Jamaicans would like to know what really is the truth and you cannot clamp down on getting the truth if you're if you're clamping down on information it means that you're not going to get the truth because we should hear the good the bad and the indifferent and then Jamaicans will have the intelligence we should be intelligent enough to weigh all of the news all of the information to which they have been exposed, and then they come up with their own version of the truth. You cannot think that this is a theocracy and you can impose your version of the truth on Jamaicans. And that is what we are getting, that the media is this sort of theocratic institution. And whatever it says from thus, you know, saith the Lord, it means therefore that the public has to listen. Now that is not what the media is up for. And the citizens of Jamaica have a right to question the challenge, to push back against the media stories and information. If not, then we're not going to have a democratic society. Yes, their primary goal is to disseminate information to us and disseminate facts. But sometimes the facts are not true because we know that the media houses are controlled by corporations, by corporate entities. So the fact is that the news that they're reporting to us are those that favor that economic class. The ruling class, the political ruling class, is not information that really empowers the Jamaican people. And that is what we have to understand. So I'm not sure why is it that there is this sort of targeting of citizens and thinking that the citizens are the problem. Really and truly, it's the media houses who, who um, which have you know serious problems because they're controlled by corporate sponsors. Now we have here targeting of journalists, this is coming from the Gleaner, targeting of journalists, civil society groups, a threat to democracy, UWI lecturer says, and Chang says JLP wouldn't condone video attacking Gleaner journalists, partly a party executive rather to tell 
membership to temper their response, their responses. Now, how are they going to temper their responses? But, you know, we're not calling here again for any rumors to be spread, especially rumors which are intentional. That is really trying to disparage people's reputation. I mean, I don't think that this is what we are sort of suggesting and supporting on this channel, but we are supporting the free flow of information and the freedom, the absolute freedom to communicate and to disseminate information. Let the court take it, run its course by, you know, um, dealing with matters which are untruth or information that might disparage a person's reputation. Now, we have here the leadership of Jamaica. Jamaica's two main political parties are being urged to rein in their supporters from unfairly targeting institutions of accountability, such as media and civil society groups. Damian Gordon, lecturer in the Department of Government at the University of the West in this Mona campus, told the Gleaner that such actions by supporters of the Jamaica Labour Party, the JLP, and the People's National Party are a danger to Jamaica's democracy. Now, it depends on what they are disseminating. And he suggests here, this is what Gordon is saying, we live in an era or an era where the truth is becoming unpopular while misinformation and lies are becoming more popular and people are actually being attacked for speaking truthfully, for speaking objectively. That is the context in which we are operating currently, Gordon said. Now, who is telling the truth? I don't know, you know, because much of what we live in Jamaica, you know, are lies. You know, the, what the entire system is built on lies, you know, of who we are as a people and we are independent and we are this democracy. We have this robust democracy that we practice, you know, all of this the economy is growing. And yesterday I saw this piece of information coming from the greener in which you know Mr. Honess was suggesting that we're growing and but yet still the greener reported two days ago there was a story that was carried in the greener and the title of that was as let me put it up sometimes it's difficult to pull this information up from the greener Jamaican economy projected to decline this fis fiscal year so it means therefore that the economy is not growing where is that growth that Dr. Nigel Clark is talking about now that he's heading to the International Monetary Fund. And Dr. Nigel Clark did say that Jamaica's economy has not never been in the position in which it finds, in which it currently finds itself. It means, therefore, that it is now ready to grow. And he has laid that, you know, I, what was golden opportunity, um, golden foundation, this robust foundation on which we ought to grow. So, you know, if we don't grow, I guess he's going to say that, you know, that's not his uh, problem, right? Because he did lay the foundation and Jamaica, it is Jamaica's now, you know, responsibility to grow and to build on that firm, solid foundation that he has left us. I'm sure that's what he's going to say, because we know that Jamaicans do not like to assume responsibility. So he's going to say that. If there are criticisms after he has left, we're going to hear that he did build the firm solid foundation and Jamaican politicians did not really build on the foundations that he left now that he is on his way to the International Monitor Fund. But we did hear from, the, let us look at the observer talking about the media landscape in terms of what we see on social media. That's an issue. And our prime minister has been on the record saying that we have to look at social media and look at what is said and what is posted. And we have seen it exasperated, exacerbated with AI, said Morris Dixon. So they are now going to check our, what's going on on social media, what we're saying and what we're not saying. Because, you know, they have to police social, social media so that they can really rein in the persons who are challenging the prime minister and the member of the leader of the opposition, the opposition party. Because this is not only about Andrew Holness, this is a political attempt to restrict freedom of speech freedom of information. And we must push back if we want a free democratic society or whatever is left of it, I should say. Right? We have to fight back against government's um, onslaught of actually preventing and restricting our freedom of expression. We've got to really fight back. We have to push back and say no to that. We cannot allow the government to police what we say um, on social media. She argued that while technology is beautiful when used for good, it can also be used for every negative thing, such as the government does that to information. And that's the whole purpose of freedom of information. You know, when you're free to say things, 
Yes, it provides good information. Sometimes it provides harmful information. And I keep on saying that when the Protestant Reformation happened in Europe, you know, the Catholic Church was a church that controlled the entire religious, you know, um, community, the Christian realm in that period. And the Protestant Reformation actually, this, you know, decided to change the whole matter of, you know, let the Bible speak for itself. And because people were free to read the Bible for themselves, they came up with different interpretation of the Bible, right? And in some cases, it was detrimental to people's salvation. But the fact of the matter is that if you're having a free society, you've got to allow absolute freedom of expression to, for people to see and to, to be able to interact with whatever information that they want to interact with. So some of the religions that were, you know, that came about, as um, due to the Protestant Reformation, you know, where some of them were not so wholesome, you know, religions, if we should say. Wholesome denominations did not come out of that. Not all of the denominations were wholesome in some cases. But guess what? That is the purpose of a free society. And people should be free to join whatever religious body they want to join. The same thing should be for the in the political realm, that people should be free to interact with whatever knowledge that they want to interact with, even though sometimes it might they might be misinformed, right? And sometimes it might not be the truthful information. But eventually, if they are committed to truth, they will ultimately find the truth. But we cannot say that we are seeking truth while we're seeking to restrict and to suppress some information. It, it's not going to happen. The more information we have, the more free flow of information that the government, you know, facilitates, it's the more that, it's the more access to the truth that the citizens will have. Now, the minister again says, I again reiterate the importance of the media, the importance that we do not attack the media as they do their very legitimate work. They're doing their jobs, even if it's a hard question, they are doing their jobs. But I think the independent media, too, are doing their jobs. And we're not saying those who are constantly spreading rumors, maybe they're doing their jobs, too. But the fact is that they have to be allowed to, to, um, to perform and to survive in this sort of free landscape that we have, this democratic landscape that we have as a result of the freedoms that we have allowed in this democratic system. We've got to allow the free flow of information and let the law run its course. What we're having now is that the Jamaican media is cornered they know that they are not really doing a great job of disseminating truth, disseminating information. So they are now attacking disseminators of information. And I'm not suggesting here that everything that is on TikTok or anything, or everything that is on social media is true. In the same way, I'm not suggesting that everything or the media should not be suggesting that everything that is in the mainstream media is true. Because a lot of the things that we see in the mainstream media are also propaganda, right? Half truths and sometimes full-blown lies, if the truth be told. You know, so this is a very important that we understand that. Now, the Press Association of Jamaica reminds the public that a free press is essential to holding those power accountable and ensuring transparency and accountability. But they're not ensuring that. We will not stand idly by while our members face harassment, intimidation, or smear campaigns, said the organization. But sometimes we do have the mainstream media also smearing, besmirching, you know, members of the independent media. You know, I've, I've seen that, including the Washington Times and these, these you know, very well-renowned um, papers, right? They sometimes besmirch, attack characters. They have character assassination of these members of the independent media. And we find that even on YouTube, sometimes your information, your videos are suppressed and they're taken down because, you know, they, the app doesn't want to accept that sort of information that the individual is actually disseminating. So it goes both ways, right? But we ought to be able to allow freedom of expression, freedom of speech, if we're going to have a thriving, robust democracy. We don't need less speech. We need more speech. The more speech we have is the more truth that people will be able to access and come to an awareness 
off. Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you would like to share and to subscribe. Remember now to like the videos so that the videos can be shared with as many people on the platform. And please hit the subscription button. It's now time for you to subscribe that our community can grow as big as possible so we can be one of the greatest diffusers of truth on this platform. See you then. All the best. Bye.